Hi everyone, this is Don Smith of Don Smith Photography. And today I'd like to teach you a lesson about pre-visualization, how I go about looking at a scene, um, seeing the scene for what it is, but in my mind, pre-visualizing how I know I can uh, finish out the processing of that scene um, through software. I notice in my workshops that a lot of my students struggle with this, and it tends to be the ones that aren't very proficient on um, processing. And those that are tend to have uh, a better visual on how they can look at a scene, be it maybe a flat scene, like this one you're seeing right here of the Tetons, so it was very flat light, but we were able to get the contrast to pop. Um, we're going to take a look at three different pieces of software to do this. Uh, we're going to do the raw file conversions through Adobe Lightroom 5. Um, then we're going to move in and I'm going to show you a great new software that I've been using on one photo suite um, version 9. And then um, also a little bit of how we do some basic luminosity masks in Photoshop. And by the way, I have my website up here, www.donsmithphotography.com. And if you come down here to the discounts and affiliations, when we get into the section of um, the video that talks about On One Perfect Photo Suite 9, you can just come here and click on that link right there if you want to purchase this software. And I highly encourage you to do it. I think after you see what it can do and some of the potential, um, you'll be chomping at the bit to get this software. And if you use this code, DSmith, you will get a 10% uh, discount when you get to the checkout window. Um, also, I'm going to be talking about some of the Sony gear. You can come back and just click on any one of these two icons here and you will get to the B&H site. And um, if you purchase through the B&H site by clicking here, I'll get a little bit of return out of this. Um, maybe it could be your way of thanking me for doing this video and teaching you a few things about processing. So let's get into the image that I want to talk about today, which is this image that I captured um, earlier in the month of February uh, at Death Valley. And this is from a vantage point at 6,800 feet called Aguirreberry Point. Now this is high in the mountains on the uh, west side of the Panamint Mountains on the west side of the valley. And we're actually looking across the valley here over to the Funeral Mountains. Now why does it look like the mountains are compressed on, uh, on top of each other? Well, I was using the new Sony A6000 camera which is an APS-C size sensor. So it's a 1.5 conversion. And I also had the new Tamron uh, 150 to 600 millimeter, the Tamron SP 150 to 600 millimeter. And go, again, if you go back to either one of those little GIFs uh, on my website and click on it, it will take you to be an HS site and you can check it all out, read about them, you'll see what the price is. Um, literally for $1,600, you could have this camera and this lens, and you could be shooting scenes like this, and it shows 600 in the metadata, but it's really 900 millimeter because you got to remember that that's a 1.5 crop factor. I shot this scene at a low ISO of 100. The sun was over my back, starting to set behind a mountain behind me. Um, I shot at f11 because I did not want... Um, the funeral mountains back here in real sharp register, but I did want the ridge of the Panamints here in nice sharp focus. And that's why I chose F11 and then simply 1 40th of a second uh, finished out the trilogy to get me the correct um, exposure on this scene. This is how the raw file looks. Uh, this is not how it looked to my eye, but this is how the raw file captured it. I had the camera set in auto white, um, because I can set all the color settings later. And what you're really going to see through this video is how when I make my tonal adjust adjustments, that's going to bring the rich color that was in this scene and bring it right out. Um, what I'm going to uh, try to get this picture to look like is what I saw in my mind's eye. And that's more of what I saw of the real color that was out there. So that's quite a dramatic look from this 
to this and let's go through the steps of how I got there. Okay, we are in the raw processor, uh, Lightroom 5, but any raw processor will work, really. And I'm just gonna run you through the simple steps that I do with any image that I bring into Lightroom. Um, the first step, I am gonna warm this up because as you can see, the Kelvin, the auto white balance got it at 5,000 K. And I happen to know that at sunset, we're looking more at around so six to 6,500 K. So I'm just gonna bump it in close enough. Let's just go back to about there. That's fine. I'm really not gonna change the tint. I rarely do. These are just starting points. Again, you're gonna see the color really richen up as we start to work through this image. Now, one thing, if you look up here in the histogram, uh, you'll notice I did capture everything from shadows to highlights. Uh, I do like centering this histogram at the point of capture. So I probably should have, instead of shooting this at 140th, shot it at 120th. Uh, but I, bet I may have been more intrigued by what I th saw through my electronic viewfinder. That does tend to happen. We get seduced by what we're seeing through our viewfinder. Um, and I teach people to really pay attention to the histogram. So the teacher really needed a lesson in going back to school here. But um, about a stop more exposure would have gotten the scene to a little bit better starting point. So let's just go ahead and add it in here. And you would probably ask yourself, well, why wouldn't you want to do this um, like I'm doing it now? And the, the answer is, is, is back here in the shadows, um, if I... If I try to do this too much, I'm gonna run the risk of not recording these shadows correctly in the field and bringing up too much noise. So this is more of what it should have looked like through my electronic viewfinder. You can see the colors certainly looked better, a little more saturated there. So be aware of that temptation. Um, just try to, when you get a scene um, that is um, pretty well balanced in tones, to just get that histogram centered. Now there is a school of thought that says move it all the way over to the right. I don't think that's necessarily the case anymore with these newer sensors that are on the market. They're so phenomenal, especially the Sony sensors. And of those of you with the Nikon D800s, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, let's go ahead and move through some of the basic um, adjustments that I make in Lightroom. And really these are just all tonal uh, adjustments. And what I mean by that, I'm going to turn my saturation off. Tonal adjustments are the black and white adjustments that are residing in the picture. Not so much the color, but as we make changes to uh, tonal adjustments, obviously we're going to make changes to the color in the picture. Okay, so if you're, tr if you're one of those that tries to make your color changes on the front end, I would hasten you and, and really try to get you to think uh, of making your tonal adjustments first, color adjustments last, because I think you're going to see color uh, increase and saturate and pop as you're working through those tonal adjustments. First thing I'm looking at is this is kind of a contrasty shot. So I'm going to just take the contrast and I'm just going to back it down a little bit. And that just tends to open up that shadow back in here. I do want to get a little more, uh, I don't want that shadow to be so opaque. I want to be able to see through my shadows, but still retain the fact that it is a shadow. Um, now, instead of working down the line in this part here, I like to set my white point first. So I'm going to come down to whites and I'm going to hold the alter option key and grab on and pull to the right just till I start to see some color come up. There we go. You see those red starting to splash? And then I'm just going to back them away. And my white point is set. I'm going to do the same with my blacks. Hold the Alter Option key. I'm going to move to the left just till I see the blacks pop up. Move it away just a bit. And we got our black point set. Okay, now we can come back up in here to the highlight and shadows. Um, I noticed that that shadow is, is still a little dark. Um, but I, instead of working on that first, I tend to work on my highlights because it may alter the way I look at shadows. So I'm going to tone down the highlights a little bit here. Just about in there. I'm actually going to take it down a full point or 100 points rather. Uh, that's a full stop of light. And then I'm going to open the shadows up. Now I'm looking right up into that shadow, not this shadow because that shadow is open pretty good. And I'm going to open that shadow about a half a stop right about in there. 
My presence, my clarity, vibrant saturation, I'm going to leave alone and I'm going to show you why in a moment here when we move into Photoshop. We'll move on down the line. We do have hue, saturation, and color. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab on the saturation. And as I move it in, you see that it's this little icon that has an up and down arrow to it. And I'm going to move it on to one of these darker, um, which to my eye was red in the scene, click. And Photoshop, or excuse me, Adobe Camera Raw will actually determine what color I've just clicked on. And as I push up, you can see the orange and the yellow sliders are moving. And I'm just going to push up to about there. And that brings up some of the warmth in the scene that I saw when I was out there. Okay. Let's move down the line. Detail. I do have a starting point on my numbers for sharpening and I'm going to put in a starting point of 40 for the sharpening, hit the tab key. I'm going to put in a half a stop or a half a point for the detail, hit the tab key and I'm going to put in 50 for, uh, or excuse me, a half a stop, half a point for my radius and 50 for my detail. Okay. Now, I see that it gets a little bit of a noise look to it. So instead of immediately coming down to noise reduction, um, I start with masking. And I'm going to hold the Alter Option key and just move it to the right until I start to see the white edges of my scene come up. Anything that is black while we're looking at this means it's not going to be sharpened. Anything that's white will be. That's where the sharpening will be applied. So I don't want my shadows sharpened because that's just sharpening noise. They don't need to be sharp, but the edges, the highlights and the edges and the midtones do need to be. So I think right about there looks fine. And as I come back up in here, probably in the uh, video, you may not see it, but it did take that little bit of noisiness out of the picture. So I really don't have to, uh, in this particular picture, set any luminance noise or color noise. Okay, now the, just the difference, so you know going forward, luminance is more like digital grain or old like film grain, whereas color noise is going to be splotchy reds and blues and things of that sort. You can get very aggressive on the color. I don't recommend you get real aggressive on the luminance because um, it will make the image look pasty. So there is a sort of a symbiotic relationship between the sharpening and the noise reduction. And in this instance, I think the masking held fine. And remember, I shot this scene at 100 ISO, so it was the cleanest file that I could shoot with my Sony a6000 to begin with. Next, let's move down to the lens correction box. I'm just going to put a little check mark in there. And because I was shooting on the Sony a6000 and a third party lens, uh, which is a Tamron, I'm going to have to actually go in and manually get it. So I just come down the list to Tamron and bang, there you go. It just found the Tamron SP uh, 150 to 600 and um, just changed any distortion or any vignetting. It automatically got it. Um, last thing I'm going to do is camera calibration. Uh, if you look, you get kind of different flavors here, sort of like walking into an ice cream shop and getting different flavors. A lot of photographers like this landscape one, but you can see it really alters the color. And remember what I said, I don't like altering my color too much until I've gotten my tonality set the way I want. So I'm just going to leave it at Adobe Standard. And that's really it for uh, Lightroom. Very simple. Probably took me longer to go through it than um, you could make these settings yourself. So now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to open this up into uh, Photoshop. And that's my finished picture. So uh, we haven't quite gotten to that stage yet. We're only right there. Now, if you've uh, purchased my videos, a simplified method to workflow, and you can order those off my uh, website for $75. And it is 26 videos, six and a half hours of instruction. Um, I know a lot of people we've sold, um, we're closing in on 2000 sales of the videos and have had just a tremendous response to them. So um, if you're struggling with your processing, I highly recommend it. Um, you will not see this in there, in there because I'm using some newer software in here. Uh, so this is just kind of a free add on for those of you that uh, have purchased the videos or if you haven't purchased it, maybe this will whet your appetite to purchase it. 
But in the videos, I talked about coming over to Google, uh, which has now purchased the Nix software, and coming in to ColorFX Pro 4 and going into my Pro Contrast, I'm not gonna open this up now, and going to Contrast Filter number three, Dynamic Contrast. I now um, started using the On One Perfect Photo Suite software. And when I come down to File Automate, you're going to see there's six modules in this software. Uh, a batch module, a black and white. Here's where I really do the, the majority of my heavy lifting on On One. It's in Effects. I am going to show you a technique in Enhance. The portrait's really fun to play with, though I'm not a portrait photographer, but you can do some really cool stuff for those of you that are. And then the resize, which you're going to see me do. So I'm going to work really in three modules, Effects, and Enhance, and resize. And by the way, the cool thing is you can stay right in Lightroom and you have access to all of these. Um, and when you go into um, Enhance or Infects, you're going to have layering ability. And you do not have that in Lightroom. And that's been my one really knock that I tell people why you need Photoshop is because layering and masking are such a huge, huge part of my workflow. Uh, for those of you that have been to my workshops or watch my videos, you understand why. But now you are going to have access to layering and masking um, just by purchasing the On One Photo Suite. 149 for the whole suite. And if you use my code, DSmith, and again, you know where to go click on my website, um, you will get that 10% discount when you plug it in at checkout. Don't forget to plug it in at checkout. Okay, so we're going to come into the effects part now, and um, we're going to go ahead and open up effects. And if you're hearing a little noise in the background, that's just my printer going off. So um, we're opening up into the effects module now. Okay. And up here on the left side, you're going to see some presets come up. And there you go. And remember, I talked about dynamic contrast. And here's our dynamic contrast filter in On One. And when you open it up, there is some presets. And my recommendation on these presets is to start with the natural. And as I click, you're going to see all of this open up in the right hand side over here. And it's already set. Uh, some presets for you. Now you can come up to layer opacity and you can take that effect off and you can bump it back into taste. I happen to like it. In fact, I want to bring out a little more detail here in the smaller detail. So this is something the Nix software doesn't offer. The ability to increase small, medium, and large areas of contrast, either reduce or add. So I'm going to take the small detail slider. I'm going to move it to the right. OK, and it might be a little hard to see on screen. I think there is we're getting a little over the top. So we can back it down a little. There we go. And if you happen to not like the effect that it made up in the mountains here, you could grab this little masking brush and you could simply mask it away. And you can make that brush bigger or smaller by hitting the left and right bracket key. I kind of like the effect that it did, so I'm going to leave it alone. Also down here, let's go back down to the bottom right, I can protect highlights. If I was doing a scene where I may have had white puffy clouds up in the sky, uh, I can protect that highlight. I can protect my shadows, my whites, my blacks. I can even add some vibrance down here if I pull on that. Okay, you can see I can go way over the top. <laughs> Or I can back it down a little. All right. Actually, I kind of like that. Let's leave it at 21 points. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to click Apply. Now, there's so much you can do in, in Perfect Photo Suite 9. And I will be doing some future videos on it. Or you could go to the uh, On One website. And they have some great tutorials on there. And check it out for yourself. So, okay, when we get back in the Photoshop, you see that it adds perfect effects as its own layer uh, on top of the background. So I can turn that on and I can turn it off. I can also come up here to the opacity tool, take it off, dial it back into taste, but I'm going to leave it up to 100%. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to layer and I'm going to flatten the image. Okay, so once again, if I go under layer, now you don't see anything 
uh, highlighted because it has been flattened. All right. Now, um, I want to show you something here, and this is a really cool feature of On One. I'm going to take my little zoom tool and we're going to come up in this mountain. Now, remember, I shot this at 900 millimeters on the Sony A6000. And if I bring this up 100%, you can see it's pretty sharp. But look at right in there, it's not really getting those edges really what I would call tack sharp. Now, this is more a function of the lens. Um, that Tamron lens is tack sharp from 150 to 450. It's tack. But from 450 out to 600, it's what I would call sharp. But I can make this tack sharp, and I'm going to do it by using the On One software. So let's go back in under File. We're going to go to Automate. And this time, instead of going to Effects, we're going to come over here to Enhance. And we'll just give this a moment to um, come up on the screen. And this time when it comes up, we're going to look on the right hand side of the screen. There we go. And we have a lot of controls we have over here. But the one I'm going to want you to look at is this little icon over here that says Fix Focus. Okay. Before I click on that, you have a couple of different types of focus fixing. You have progressive, high pass, and unsharp mass. And I just would tell you to go through and experiment with all three of these and see if you're getting the look you want. I've already experimented with this picture, so I'm going to put it with high pass and I'm going to click fix focus. Okay, and you can already see that there was quite a pop. Let's come down here. I'm going to move to the bottom left where it says preview and I'm going to undo it and I'm going to redo it. Okay, now this time, I really didn't like what it did to the mountains. It kind of sharpened those up a bit. So I can always come up here to my eraser and I can, I can take that and I'm just going to put a mask around it. We're going to do this just really kind of quick to take the effect off of where I'm masking. Okay, right through there. And through there, and I'm, I'm doing it quick. I, I could size the brush down and really get fine tune in and around the edges. But we're going to take it like that. And what it's going to do, you're seeing it erase objects, so it's going to take the sharpening off of those back mountains. And this is a 16-bit file. We're still in 16-bit mode, so it's going to take a little bit. This all has to do with how fast your computer is. This is an older computer. Um, it's still pretty fast, but um, we just have to kind of wait because I do want you to see the effect of this. So about halfway there. By the way, if using fixed focus at high pass, didn't, you, can, you can always change the amount here. OK, um, and if if that doesn't work or it doesn't get it quite enough, there are other ways up here that you can do it. You can come up here under tone and you can click click on contrast and it will add some midtone contrast to your edges. OK, that's another way you can do it. And let's just whoa, we had a little problem there. <laughs> All right, so. We're going to, there we go. Okay, it was just processing through. <laughs> uh, all right, now you can see that it's taken that sharpening back off the mountains and back off of the valley floor down here and just left it in the area that I wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and click Apply. And what it's going to do is put it back out onto Photoshop for me as a layer. And the great thing about layers is you can always add a mask or more importantly, you can always take the opacity and slide it up and down. Before I do that, I'm going to click on the zoom layer or the zoom icon rather, and I'm going to come up to 100%, one more click. And you can now see, let's get back up into these rocks. You can now see before and after. Um, and what I'm doing is just making sure we haven't gone overboard in any of the sharpening here. So another way to do that visually is to take the opacity slider and turn it off and bump it in. Turn it off and bump it in. 
and just try to find where it's starting to pop, which is right around between 60 and 70%. I think right in there. I'm going to leave it just at 70%. I'm going to zoom back out. Okay. Whoops. I'm zooming back in. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and flatten that layer. Now, with on one, if I want to do um, masking techniques in, in Photoshop, which is going to be my next step that I'm going to show you, I need to come under layer and make sure if it's highlighted, flatten image that I can go ahead and flatten that. So when you come back now, it's it's no longer okay. It puts a background layer in there that will mess mess around with the luminosity masks. Now, again, in my in my uh, video series, uh, I teach you kind of not in depth, but I, I give you five videos that show you uh, kind of more in depth ma uh, luminosity masking using Tony Kuiper's um, masks, which you can also get an, uh, off my website at a discount. I'm going to show you just what I call basic luminosity masking. Before I do this, I have to tell you what it is I want to do. I'm going to divide this photo in two. I'm going to look at the front uh, range here. Uh, of the panaments that we have sharp now, but I think it's still too bright. And I want to tone that down a little. And then I'm going to come back to the Funeral Mountains. Remember, 12 miles across the valley. And I'm going to bring the tone on that down and maybe bump the warmth up a little to the way my eyes saw it. This is the cool thing about these masks. You don't have to be very precise at selecting. I just grab the lasso tool and I'll come right through that shadow and you can see I'm leaving a lot of room in there. And uh, the marching ants begin. Now I'm going to go inside the selection. I'm going to right click and feather. And I do a high feather amount, 250. And what this means is that the transition on any effect that I do is going to be very subtle. So it won't be shown. The lesser the number, the harsher the transition line, the larger the number, the softer the transition. I've just found that 200 works really good. Now I'm going to come back over to my layer palette, come down here to this little circle and grab a curves adjustment. But I'm not just going to pull down on this curve line here. Uh, for those of you new to curves, bottom left are your shadows and top right of the diagonal line represents your highlights. I'm going to take this little targeted adjustment tool, click on it, and I'm just going to drop it in anywhere because these are all kind of equal tones in here. And you can see that it just puts a little marker on my tone line. And if I pull down, it darkens down the foreground. I don't have to be real precise. Why? Because it puts it on a layer with an opacity slider. Turn the effect off, bump it back in. Okay, off, bump it back in. Okay, that's one part of the photo dealt with. And by the way, on my video series, I have a whole chapter that deals with this a little more in depth. And um, if you're interested, again, you can purchase those videos and you can take a look at that. And that's just one of 26 lessons I teach. Okay, put another um, uh, selection around the back mountains now. Feather it, 250, we'll leave that alone. Come back, add a curves adjustment. And I'm just going to find kind of a brighter part of the scene and pull that down. And wow, look at that color start to saturate. Okay. There we go. Let's get rid of that box. Come back over to the opacity slider. Before, after, before, after. Okay. I'm going to add one more. Actually, two more here. Uh, I tend to now let my eye drift around the scene. I'm going to include that little section there. I'm going to feather this, leave it at 250. Anything that's kind of bright around the edges of my scene, um, I tend to not, I tend to want to darken them down because the eye will uh, gravitate up to that edge of the scene. And I don't really want my viewer's eye going up into my corners of my scene uh, and possibly drifting out of my scene. So I want to try to hold the eye. This was a, a concept I learned from Ansel Adams. He actually used a subtle vignette, which we are going to put on this picture when we're all done. But I'm still just fine tuning here. So same thing with this rock. Just, um, you know, we're doing kind of what Mother Nature could do naturally out there in the field. If a cloud blew in or if there was a ridge line behind me blocking this, it might actually shadow that rock down a little bit. Okay. And I think I'm going to go ahead 
uh, and I'm even going to add a little bit more down here on the bottom because this is all pretty bright, especially up in through there. And I'll just come back around, feather that again. Again, this is all about holding the eye in the scene and working the eye back up into more of the center of the scene where we want it to hold. So let's come over here and find a bright tone in that rock, maybe right there. And you can get pretty aggressive, not, you know, not too aggressive. But even if you do, remember, just come back over here to your opacity slider and back it off. Okay, um, looking pretty good. We're almost there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flatten these uh, layers. And I'm going to check that I have nothing under my layer lit, which I don't. And I'm going to go uh, two more things I'm going to show you in the On One software. And I'm going to go to Automate. And we're going to come back over here into Effects, which is really where I do, again, the majority of my work in On One. It's just a some phenomenal, phenomenal features that they have over here. And I talked about adding a little bit of a vignette to my photos. This is again was a Ansel Adams technique that he added. Uh, the key, like anything, is to make it subtle. So I come under vignette and I like going to this guy that's called Big Softy. Now, it tends to want to overdo it. So again, come up to, you can see it's on its own layer. So come up under layer opacity here turn off the effect and slowly bump it back in right about in there okay any part you don't like you could whoops i'm sorry <laughs> any part you don't like you could always grab this brush up here the masking brush and because you're on a mask you could paint away um, and i may actually paint a little bit right in there because i think because we had already darkened that it's a little too dark now, my opacity when I do this, I like to take it down and work in increments. So um, I think I'm going to take that down to about, oh, right about 18%. And we're just going to paint some of that away. Every time I click and re-click, I'm taking a little bit more out of there. I'm going to work down here in the shadow a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so it's very subtle. Uh, everything else is looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply over here. We're almost done. Show you one more step here of using the on one software. Okay, again, it puts it on its own layer. I'm going to flatten that. And uh, we're going to come back to layer and flatten the image. And now I'm just going to size it. So we, we've been working in 16 bit. So in Photoshop, I'm going to come up under mode and go to eight bits. And I could at this point duplicate the picture if I wanted to save the master, but um, because I'm in just demonstration mode anyway, I'm gonna come back under file and go to automate and go down here to uh, perfect resize nine. And perfect resize nine uses a great software called Genuine Fractals. So on one has put Genuine Fractals in here and you can see up here, this picture is at 20 inches at 13.33. I'm just going to affect the long end. And I know that if I type in 17.4, because I'm prepping this image to send out to my stock agency Getty images, when I apply, that will make it a 52 meg file. Now you're going to see it reduced down here. We're back in Photoshop. It's crunching it and it reduced it down, but it didn't lose any of the sharpness, didn't lose any of the tonality, didn't lose any of the colors. It just reduced it down beautifully. Um, and at 8 bit, I can come in and check my image size, and you see it's 17.4 and dead bang, 52 megs. I could send that off to uh, Getty and uh, we'd be ready to go. Last thing I'm going to do is check the sharpness. A lot of times I just forego this step because when I do dynamic contrast, it's that midtone enhancement is really putting in a lot of contrast to begin with. But I'm going to come back to the Nick tool here because I just really like their Sharpener Pro. And I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at 100%. It's going to look a little over sharpened to you. But I think you know where I'm going with this. Um, it's on a layer. 
and we have opacity. Before I do anything, I'm gonna just throw a, a white mask up there, and I just did that by clicking on the mask here. Now, I'm gonna hit the Zoom tool and find an edge up in here. Let's go back up into our rocks. I think we were up in this section of the photo and zoom up 100%. And yeah, it looks over sharpened there. So I'm gonna turn the effect off and just bump it back in. Off, in, okay. And it looks, see, it doesn't take much. I'm at about 29, okay. Now, here's what it does do though. It comes over into this soft area and these shadows that I really don't want softened. But I've added a mask. And so let me highlight this layer again and reduce this photo down. And I'm gonna type B for brush. And if I hit my right bracket key, it brings the brush up. But before I got a brush, I do have a white mask. So I just have to make sure I've got black on top here. If you don't, hit the D key for default. If it's something like that, where white's on top, just hit the X key to default it to black. And now I can paint away that sharpening that was back up on that area. And I'm doing this at 100% because I just don't want any sharpening back up in there. Now I'm going to go to Z to hit the zoom tool. We'll come back up in there. And now you can see that it took um, the sharpening and just took it right away and left the sharpening where it should be on this foreground ridge. Okay, so there you go. I can flatten that, um, give it a name, save it out, and uh, you're ready to go. Uh, oh, by the way, and I won't do it now, I'll do this in a future video, but I could save a duplicate of this if I want to put it on, uh, well, actually for the picture I did put on the website, and I would go back under uh, Resize and on one, and I would reduce it way down for a web version that I can put out on my website. Um, and again, it will hold all the sharpness, all the color, all the tonality that we have worked to uh, get into this picture. Okay, so there's some techniques for you, a quick, fast workflow. Again, if you don't have Photoshop, On One Photo Suite Pro 9 does work in Lightroom. It does give you layering, it does give you masking. Uh, great, great uh, product for $149, minus the 10% discount when you use D. Smith. Um, I'll make some more videos as we go along and try to help you out with the software, but check their site, they have some terrific terrific um, training software is also and just don't be afraid of using it get in there tug on those sliders see what they do but remember the key get the tonality right and your colors will follow suit so until next time thank you for watching and this is don smith and if you would love to see you at one of our workshops by the way www.donsmithphotography.com check it out our workshops are pretty much full for the 2015 openings. I do have some openings for Bryce Zion next fall, and we just reopened Gary and Hart and I. It opened up a second workshop this August in uh, the Grand Canyon, a monsoon workshop that's just phenomenal. So if you get a chance, uh, check those workshops out. Send me an email, don at donsmithphotography.com if you need any more information, but everything is on my website there. And I hope to hear from you. Thanks for watching.